I don't try to make All in the Family look like a perfect little movie. I think it's more important that it look like a performance, which it is always, an uninterrupted live performance. I don't think that pickups with fancy camera angles and, a multi and, and multiple shots helps it any. I think what it helps that show is for the characters to come out. In brief, I think the director's job is to approach a group of actors on their level, on each, le on each one's level, to make that work inside a text in order to achieve the author's intent fully. Now that's, I guess, as simply as I can put it. It's never as simple as that. But that, I think, is the best way I can put it. The ultimate a goal is to achieve the author's intent, or the intent of the, uh, the whole project, whatever that is, and to make the people work within it as well as possible, to minimize those faults in an actor which don't satisfy the needs of the script, and to maximize those that do work. The show was a success long before I came to it, so I had no hand in that. It was a great success, probably one of the biggest successes that, that has ever been on television. Mm -hmm. So I had no hand in, in making that happen. Uh, nor did I think I was going to have to do anything about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I simply approached it as I would a dramatic show, which I'd done for many years, or a film, within the limits of the time involved, which uh, didn't permit for much technical uh, perfection, mm -hmm. sacrificing that. I went to what I thought were um, essential behavioral uh, principles, the way I would direct anything. How would I feel uh, in a given situation, uh, projecting myself into Edith Bunker's uh, mind or to, into Archie's? Uh, I do know that I like people to touch one another more. Uh, I, like, uh, I like affection to play itself out a little bit more. I think Archie gropes Edith a little bit more. They kiss a lot more. They run up to the bedroom a lot more. Uh, I'm not afraid or inhibited about laying that out, and it doesn't strike me as dirty or anything. And, uh, you know, so I think they f that has freed them a lot, too. I think. Uh, Can you uh, more or less break down what the process is that you go through on a week show? On a show like All in the Family, you mean? Well, we start on Monday morning. I'm in early to edit the show that we did the week before. We do one a week. I come in after editing. I'm at rehearsal at 11. All the writers are there, uh, all the actors, the principal actors. And we read the following week's script so that then, the, and then discuss it, tear it apart, discuss it. The uh, writers take it away to work on it some more. We then, after a lunch break, read this week's script which we read for the first time last week, which was presumably fixed or rewritten or whatever. And then we do more work on it. The major time on Monday is spent in improving the text. Uh, I don't worry so much about staging. I know there are a lot of directors, especially television directors, who get uh, catatonic when it comes to containing action because they're worried about all the multiple camera angles, the possibilities. Uh, when somebody moves, you have a crisis. I mean, it's all right as long as I'm sitting here, but what will you do if I stand up? You know, you'd go crazy. I mean, you wouldn't know what to do unless I planned it in advance. That, you know, that sort of thing. That's one so, we didn't discuss. Huh? <laughs> that is one we didn't discuss. <laughs> so, uh, 
I used to worry about that a lot when I started in television. I mean, it's okay. I knew I could have a camera on you and a camera on me, and that's fine. A camera out there maybe on the two of us. But what happens if you stand up and walk? Or the phone rings. But then I figured, all right, then I figured out that action is action. And as long as people don't walk off the set, you can carry it somehow. So all the attention early on is given to the text, to the play itself, to making sure that we have something sizable that we want to do, that it's about something, mm -hmm. that it is funny, uh, and that the audience, uh, that we hope, the, something we hope the audience will enjoy. We work on that a long time. That's all we do on Monday. We, when we come back on Tuesday morning, there has been some more script work done, and we, do it, we go through it again. Uh, Carol has a lot to say about his character, quite justly, so does uh, Gene. They're, they own those characters, they are those people. And they really understand them right down to their bones. So a lot of fashioning is done to suit them and to make, uh, make them fit, make the, the play fit the characters. Mm -hmm. Working backwards because usually you do it the other way around, but this is a different case. And then eventually we get on our feet a couple of hours later and we start moving people around and I never uh, agonize too much about movement, except in general terms. If I think something should move fast because of the feeling inside it, I will arrange it so that there's a lot of business and a lot of moving around. I won't worry yet about how I'm going to shoot it. Uh, we do that for the rest of the day. We will finish that work on Wednesday morning. We'll try to have a run through for ourselves of what we've done. And by Wednesday, late Wednesday afternoon, we're giving a performance for the, for the staff. All the writers come in, Norman Lear comes in to see what's happening, and the CBS censors come in to see what outrage we've perpetrated. And um, We have a performance, which, which is astonishing, because uh, they pretty well know their lines from Monday to Wednesday. It's a, it's a remarkable feat on their part. I have nothing but admiration for the actors. After that, we have another note session, at which time we discard things that don't work or things that people hate or need more work. We try to refashion them. That goes on until about 7 or 8 o'clock. The script goes to Mimeo. I sit around and wait. When it comes back, I start blocking shots. I start thinking, um, in a, on, a more, on a more practical level, about how I'm going to shoot it. And Thursday, we're in the studio. The shots are distributed to the cameraman, and we start blocking. We block shot by shot each scene. After we block each scene, we run each scene, make corrections, go on to the next scene, do that for the rest of the day, have a run through for ourselves at the rest of the day. The show is gelling all the time, and it's still not finished. It changes constantly. We're constantly throwing out things and replacing them with things that we hope will work better. And uh, the show is never frozen, not even when we get on the air the next day. On Friday, we come in a little late. It's our, it's that day we get a break. Uh, we don't have to be there till, a little, uh, till afternoon. We read the play again including the changes that we made on Thursday night. I make the camera changes. We get into the control room, put them on the stage. We rehearse the camera changes. Mm -hmm. After that, we run the whole play again, and the next thing we do is a performance for an audience for the first time, a you know, sizable audience. After that, we break, find out what our time problems are. Are we long? Are we short? what didn't work, what does work, what should we make better, what should we throw out. And we do that while we're having a dinner break. As we eat, we do that. And then we come back and do a second performance. After that, uh, we take a five minute break, get the audience out of the studio, and then we view everything we've shot to make sure that we're covered on everything. If we don't have good material and enough material to put both the dress rehearsal 
first performance and the second air performance together, we have to shoot pickups, uh, which everybody hates to do because it keeps us there late, and I hate it as much as anybody. But if we have to, we do do it. I edit every show. There's all the, <clears throat> all the uh, on-the-air editing that's done as we go. Uh, we have two isolated uh, positions, two isolated feeds, so we can correct mistakes, uh, late cuts, wrong cuts. There aren't many of those. Mm -hmm. And we, we can polish it that way. Uh, I come in, uh, as we view on Friday night after the second performance, I tell the assistant director exactly which we'll use, dress or air, at which point, where we'll make the crossovers, or approximately where. Mm -hmm. And when I come in on Monday morning, I sit there and we go through it. We edit it right there on Monday morning. Uh, we edit it on the uh, slant track mm -hmm. with the time codes and all that. And then I go away uh, while they just feed all that business into the computer and the machine puts it, uh, edits the, uh, the two inch, or, well, however it works. Whatever. Uh, do you get involved at beyond that? Oh, I mean, sure. Apparently they sweeten. Sure. After the audio it's finished and it's and sweetened, I see it again, and I've already told, uh, made notes on where the where the sweetening should happen. We very rarely uh, fix laughs. The only time we do is when in editing we've cut a laugh in half, mm -hmm. and we just want to smooth it out. You know. How uh, long does all this take? I'm curious. Big one? How long does all this take from that? For, say from the time oh, you get it. A little time that you're breathless. I, mean, I wish they. I wish there were more time. It all happened so fast. We finished sh shooting a show on Friday, and by Monday night, it's already uh, on two inch. And it's sweetened. Well, I'm not sure. I don't have my schedule, but very shortly thereafter. So it's well within a week? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, when you actually get around to the taping in the control room, there seems to be, my impression was that it was, it was a extremely calm situation on the whole until you actually start and uh, you create a, an incredible energy and you know it's it's much louder and much more demanding and I, I, I think I understand why but I mean you talk about that <laughs> <laughs> sure I'm not aware of what I do while we're on the air it's my most uninhibited time of, all, of my whole life I'm not aware of how I look how I feel what I say I'm so concentrated on what I'm doing. I'm always looking right into the eyes of the people on the screen. Um, I, uh, I think I developed uh, uh, an atmosphere very early on. Because mm -hmm. many years ago when I was doing live shows, live dramatic, heavy dramatic shows, sometimes every week or every other week, um, it was very easy for a crew and for actors to be rattled, to, to, to be terrified of what they were do, doing. They were going on the air live before millions of people. Mm -hmm. And that is a terrifying thing. And I knew that I had to help them to be as secure as possible. So even if I were kind of uh, anxious about the performance, I tried not to let them see it. And so oh, that's atmosphere. Directors bring in a lot of their own atmosphere sometimes. My atmosphere, I think, which now is uh, easier for me, is calm. Uh, I think it helps, it helps me to get through it, and it helps the actors too, but it was developed in live television when the terror was greater than anything else. But there's a sense of urgency when you yell take. Well, when, when we get to that, I want no mistake about when or how. And stuff. when I raise my hand and the technical director takes the shot before I've dropped it, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm unfinished, you know. What, that's a mistake, you know. Does that happen often? Sometimes. No, not often, sometimes. Sometimes he saves me when I make a mistake. I think that the important thing when you in shooting a television show is that you don't interfere with it. I don't care if the audience doesn't know I'm there. As a matter of fact, I, I hope they don't. 
I have no sign signature to put on it. Uh, we are all extremely modest about what we add to that show. It's hard to tell whose joke belongs to whom. Uh, if you ask me who, who came up with a certain situation in last night's show, I'd have to stop and think a while, you know, before I could remember at which point it happened. So, um, shooting style. You know what I'm getting to. Yeah. When you block things, what yeah. I see is that you tend to block sh single shots very close, and you tend to block everything on the side you know, rather than blunt on. You do some, but oh, not that's everything the, is done over yeah. shoulder and... That's an outgrowth of early television. When we had, we, we had sets that were sometimes only two flats, you know, with a one corner. Uh, and in order to avoid shooting into a flat wall, I would pick the deepest angle, the steepest angle into that corner. So that at least I had some perspective going away from the camera. I will position cameras off the edges of each set in order to get that same thing. I do that habitually. Yeah. And I bring people down toward them. Uh, I you do that. You also tend to play differently than other people. Uh, cameras at the very wide range and very low, or the very tight range. You don't seem to do much in the way of mid-ground shots. Well, I'm not aware of that. I know that if people are sitting down as we are, I don't want the camera up there looking at the tops of their heads. I want to see their eyes. As a matter of fact, that's all I ever look at on the screen is the actor's eyes. I mean, terrible things. I don't see open flies, but I see eyes. And, um, and that's why I think that if I'm sitting, I want the camera sitting. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm standing up, well, all right. It's, it's easier for cameramen to operate at their height. And I found early on in television, 25 years ago, more than that, that the tall men would operate the camera at their level and the short men at their level. And if I blocked the shot down here, by the time I got on the air, it would be up there if a tall cameraman was operating. So I would go to the trouble of blocking the low shots on the short men and the high shots on the tall men. Did that for a long time to protect, to protect the shots. Uh, now I holler a bit more, you know, about that and get a little more insistent about it. I don't know what I, the only, the only style I can say I have is that if I don't interfere with the essence of the action at that moment, then I have done my job. There's no reason to cut to another camera unless something more important is happening on that angle or somebody moves. Otherwise, just sit there. I, I think that's fine. I, there, are, there are long scenes that I will play on one camera. Uh, I don't Necessarily, necessarily belong to the school of thought that uh, rapid cutting means action. This is not a, you know, it's not a shoot 'em up show or anything like that. I don't like to get between the camera and the actors. If I'm not shooting their behinds while they're doing something important on their faces, I, I'm doing my job. It occurs to me that television is an illusion. You know, everybody says it's a bunch of dots and patterns. Um, how much, how much are you aware of what you do in terms of creating illusion? I mean, you seem to talk as though, I'm not sure where I'm going with this. <laughs> you seem to talk as though you're very honest about what you do, and I think that's, that's very important and it's true and it's, it's clearly obvious. But still, it's an illusion, you know. The, the carpet on the floor isn't real, it's painted. Um, uh, the camera helps heighten different senses of illusion. Right. Those particular cameras that you use look different than the cameras that we're using or, or film or whatever. Um, television is an illusion that's done within the format of a relatively small screen with an incredibly lousy speaker. How much do those things, how much do you think about those and how much do you play to them? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> let's see. I think that television, it's, it's true, it's an illusion. I said that. After all, just pictures of people, that's all there is to it. But television is a very literal illusion, by which I mean that carpet on the floor is painted. Uh, and you can see that. You can see marks on the floor sometimes. You can see cracks in the scenery. You can see makeup. You can see pores on faces. You can see hairs coming out of ears. So it's a very realistic illusion. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's a very literal thing that uh, television shows you everything. Movies don't do that. Movies are beautiful. Even, even those that are achieved without fancy lighting and that are shot with what they call available light, you know, and made to look like they just caught them on the fly as things were happening. On film, everybody is beautiful. You don't see cracks in the scenery, marks on the floor, pores. You don't see any of it. People are gorgeous on film. And that's way away from television. Television is quite real. And that's what I try to preserve. I know it's a performance. I'm not kidding myself about that. And it's all uh, uh, inside a formula as well. Uh, one I, I rather like. I mean, uh, I think uh, All in the Family is light years ahead of uh, other things, and that's why I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> the lights have just... No, MTM was watching. <laughs> no, MTM was watching. <laughs> I'm fine over here. How are you, Jerry? You, you must be with the shrivels, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you doing with the shrivels? Good we lose. Oh, well, go ahead. <laughs> It's real, right? We lost a lot. Uh, you asked me about illusion. I don't know. I know that the performance itself is a, is, a, is a concoction. But it's as real as it can be within those limits. What can I tell you? Um, I was curious. Why do you think Norman hired you? I think he... Well, I, I hope he hired me because he thought I would uh, help the show and do a good job with it. And... Uh, Otherwise, he'd have been crazy to hire me. I mean, he'd been asking me for a long time to do All in the Family. I'd been offered uh, a job as producer, which I wouldn't touch because I like my weekends. Mm -hmm. And the producers work all the time, and that's not for me. I, mean, I like to get away from it sometimes. And uh, I finally took it because I decided it would help to stretch me, first of all, put me in front of an audience again. I hadn't been exposed to an audience in a long time, and that's a good thing. It reminds you that you're fashioning things for them, you know, not just up here trying to outguess them. Also, they pay me wonderfully. <laughs> I yeah. get wonderful, wonderful salary. Yeah. Beautiful residuals. It's wonderful. <laughs>